Hello everyone, welcome to yet another exciting Sunday at our Hartridge Broadcast Center in I Wicom. Um, I'm very happy because this is the first Sunday of this month of April. And I'll be going into a particular topic that I believe will also add value to our lives and circumstances. And uh, the topic for this series, which will be going on all of this month, is getting rid of of mountains getting rid of mountains um, just to give us an idea um, I'll be preaching it in four installments I would like to employ anybody who has got access to me to try and access what has been preached especially last month and what will be preached this month I, I believe very strongly that they are not only relevant but they will add value no matter where you are and where you are trying to get to in life. This one is so important for me because I believe that the reason we are not seeing good testimonies among too many Christians lies within some of the things we'll be covering in this topic. So this month I'll be breaking it in four installments like I mentioned. And the one I'll be preaching today is there will be mountains. Next installment, we'll be talking about identifying mountains. And then after that, I'll be looking at God and mountains. And then finally, I'll be talking about speaking to your mountains. So it is uh, going to be an exciting series this month uh, i promise you now for those who might be a bit confused and wondering why we're doing geography in the house of god on sunday morning it is very important for us to quickly define what we mean by <laughs> mountains there are two major types of mountains they are not physical they are spiritual mountains and there are two main types the first one has to do with god and that is the mountain of society those are the pillars that hold society up of which the highest mountain in that series is the lord's mountain like i've said they're not physical they are spiritual. So every society in the world is held up by seven mountains. And the highest of those mountains, the chief of those mountains, is the Lord's mountain. Amen? Amen. The second type, which is the one I'll be really exploring for us, are evil mountains. And these are obstacles that tend to stand in our way of happiness and progress. One of the questions I've been asked so many times before is why we have miserable Christians. It sounds like an oxymoron. You call yourself a child of God and you're like the most miserable individual on earth. So where is God in your life then? Where is God in your circumstances? So it's either you're deluded or you don't fully understand who it is you have received into your life. Either way, something is wrong. I can understand people who are not religious being miserable. I get that. I can understand them being perpetually miserable. In fact, I'll be shocked if they're not. But how can a child of God who has received Jesus into their life still be miserable as in perpetually. I'm not saying we don't have hiccups. You know, of course we do. <clears throat> but perpetually miserable. Something is wrong. And so I'll be delving into those evil mountains. But much more importantly, we'll be looking at how we can tackle them and destroy them and remove them from our lives and circumstances. So by my own definition and for the sake of this message, I've defined mountains are situations that stand in your way of progress or victory. 
This could be individuals or cluster of situations that conspicuously stand in your way of happiness. I don't know about you, but let me start by giving a very recent example. And that's myself. As of yesterday, two of my eyes were bloodshot. I, I, I worked hard teaching as Sir William Ramsey. We went on holiday break. I was going to rest. I had so many things I wanted to catch up with. I went to do all of my stuff. We prayed. I went to bed. I woke up. No, I, I went. I slept. I woke up. My eyes were bloodshot, red, and I couldn't see properly. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you know, I had to go to the hospital yesterday morning. But what really got to me is that while we were at the hospital, the person that was meant to be treating me was looking at me in despair. Do, I know, do you know how discouraging that can be when somebody you've come to to treat you <laughs> is looking at you that has come and is like, wow, we don't really know what this is. <laughs> so thank God, I'm saying that for openness. I'm not one of those people that say all I did was pray around the house and I prayed, my wife and I prayed. We prayed. And there's nothing wrong with that because ultimately your healing comes from God. It will never come from a tablet. I know because I used to sell many of them. You know, it, tablet helps, but it's God that heals. Amen? Mm -hmm. that, that's the ultimate journey. But when the person you've run to, somebody who has spent 14, 15 years of their life qualifying, looks at you and saying, I don't really know what's going on with your eyes, then you know that that was a spiritual attack. Mm. Because if it was within the confines of what they've studied, you would have called it some name straight away. Oh, it is something, 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 something. You know, but he looked at it and you know people, I'm a very observant person, but people give themselves a way when nobody is watching or where they think nobody is watching. And I'm one of those people that like to watch people when they think nobody is watching. I've made a, a life habit of it. So when the guy was still trying to get ready or when he first put that lens on his face, I took a look at his expression and it was despair. He didn't have a clue. So before he opened his mouth to explain to me that he didn't have a clue, I already knew he didn't have a clue. So I'm just like, whoa. But I was not shaking. I was not, uh, uh, I did not lose hope. I was concerned, obviously. Very concerned. Why? Because we prayed. And however it was going to happen, God would, 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 still, would still sort me out. Amen? Mm -hmm. Guys, that was a mountain right there. So you can imagine, I would have not been able to stand before you today to give you some of the secrets I'm about to release that we set one person free, at least one person free. So, there's stuff that comes our way. Now, I don't want to go all opus scopus or whatever you call it. I don't want to go all ooh, abracadabra over it. No. Sometimes, some of them are self-inflicted. Some of the mountains we face are self-inflicted. You have an exam, you haven't studied well for it. Um, there's a high probability you will fail it. Mm. That has nothing to do with God. That has nothing to do with Satan. That's self-inflicted. You drink all night and party all around. Sometimes your liver is going to give you a phone, a phone call at some point. That has nothing to do with God. That has nothing to do with Satan. That's just self-inflicted. You don't eat well, and then your weight starts to go the wrong direction. That's self-inflicted. It has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with Satan. So, there's, there, in the mixture of all these spiritual mountains that we cannot physically see, we now have even further confusion of the ones that are self-inflicted. You are making poor choices. You are going now with somebody who abuses you. You are going to get beaten, man. It's as simple as that. I remember when I was young, I used to see girls my age who were teenagers and they would go out with some of my friends that we all knew were violent. You understand? They had a reputation for being violent. And while they are still dating, he started slapping them already. And they said, no, he's such an adorable person. You are going to get a hiding. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. It has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with Satan. You made a poor choice. 
Because you saw trouble and you walked into it. Do you know why I can say this with confidence? I have run into so many of those things by myself. Amen? Amen. I'm not standing here talking at you. I'm a living, breathing example of, of looking at stupid things and walking towards it. So, some of these mountains are self-inflicted. Many of them are. But I also want to make you know that some of them are not. You understand? Let's balance it. Did I infect my own eyes yesterday? So that is, where, that is the realm we're talking about now. Mm. The realm in which it has nothing to do with the choices you made, but it just seems that you keep running into obstacle after obstacle. In one of the series, like I told you, is identifying mountains. I'll be talking more on how you can identify what mountains are and what you need to do about them. Mm. But, guys, when you start to see a pattern that doesn't make sense, don't just sit back and accept it. I keep giving this example. If you have not lived in Africa or in other parts of the world, uh, developing world, you, it may not really make much sense to you. But I'm going to try and see if it can make more sense to you. The first week I got to the United Kingdom, I put on the TV. I've given this example before. People keep wondering why I keep going over and over about it. <laughs> A woman lost five children in one day mm. in north of England. Mm. And she was interviewed. Of course she was distraught. Of course she was in tears. But it's like, oh, I, I, I've got bad luck. Mm. I'm saying to whoever is listening to me, that's not bad luck. Something is wrong. Mm. Losing five children in a day is not bad luck. Something is wrong. Mm. But because we live in a society that wants to explain everything scientifically. They did not have any space to include <coughs> demonic attacks. And that brings me right into the foundation of this series I want to teach. Because you've got to clarify it in your mind. Does God exist or not? Settle it for yourself. I'm not here to convince anyone. Settle it for yourself. And if you agree that God exists, does Satan exist or not? Set to that question for yourself too. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things I've noticed in the developed world, they're living in such fantasy and make-believe world. And like, oh, all those things don't exist. I have a friend on Facebook because he lived in England for 50-something years. You understand? So he only lived in Nigeria for about 10 years. He's like, oh, all this uh, voodoo they're always talking about. I don't think they're real. And I, I, and I replied, I said, Francis, you know, because he lived in Onicha when he was in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I said, Francis, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor. I said, yes. I said, when you have some extra money, buy a ticket for both of us. I'll take you to a village in Nigeria where you find out if voodoo is real or not. Mm -hmm. Not on this Facebook where you're hiding behind your laptop and feeling all safe. Why am I saying this to you guys? One of the biggest lies society has told you or what they've tried to do is to make to, to desensitize you from the existence of Satan. So they've got satanic names as games. They've made it into television shows. They make jokes of it on same scene. So by the time all of that is done, in your subconscious, you don't even think it's real. And the worst enemy anyone can face is an enemy they are not even aware or of. Mm. They exist. Mm. That's why United Kingdom has the highest level of teenage depression in the world. And they still think it's medical. The sixth richest country in the world has the highest teenage depression rate in the world. This is statistics from four days ago. So it's not, I'm not out of touch. How can people who have everything be so miserable? Hey, somebody help me explain that. And you think that is still physical. Of course, something is wrong. Something is wrong. I'm not saying they're lying. They're not lying. Mm -hmm. Depression is real. <clears throat> Depression kills. What I'm saying is what's causing it. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm talking about. I worked in the priory clinic. The priory clinic is the most popular depression um, treatment clinic in the United Kingdom. I saw Robbie Williams in his slippers. He was out of his mind. 
This somebody, everybody is buying his record. He came there with bedroom slippers. They dropped him in a in a Rolls Royce. I, I, I sat there. I'm like, oh my God. You are worth what, 65 million pounds? And your mind is all over the place? Of course, something is attacking your mind. Something is attacking your mind. So, why, why, why am I saying this to you guys? Guys, if there's anything telling you you are, you are ugly, those are the things I'm talking about here. If something is telling you you are not going to make it, those are the things I'm talking about here. Is there something that tells you you are never going to marry? Those are the things I'm talking to you about here right now. You know why? They're saying those things to me too. It's just that we don't compare notes. So you think you're the only one that is, is, who's, been, who's been inflicted by those things. No, talk to the next person and you know, have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with them. You'll be amazed how similar your notes are going to be. Is there something tell, telling you you are going to fail? Is telling me to. Is there something that says that I don't know? I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to make success of what God has asked me to do. Yes. Every day, six times a day, twelve times a day. Take your pick. So, guys, there are mountains that are self-inflicted. That one, the correction is very simple. You correct yourself and make you know better choices. But there are some that is outside of our limit, is the point I'm making. And if you do not have a spiritual defense against it, you keep thinking it's normal. That's just the way it is. That's just that's why five children died in a day. And she said, oh, bad luck. I, I felt like smashing through the TV because I've just come from Africa. I'm like, can't you see something is wrong? You lost all of your five children in one day and you're saying bad luck. Guys, there are spiritual mountains. That's what I'm trying to say to you. And they are real. And the Bible tells us about them. And how we can protect ourselves from them. Our mind is the most prized possession we have. And, they are, and it's under attack. Everybody's mind is under attack. And the Satan is always looking for the, an area where you are vulnerable. You, you, you get the point I'm making? So those are mountains. Now let's get into the Bible and find out what the Bible has to tell us about mountains. Psalm 34 verse 19. Let's read it together. One, two, go. Many, Many are, are the, the afflictions, afflictions of the righteous. righteous. Stop. Who are those afflicted? Many. The righteous. The righteous and the many. So why do we go around pretending they don't exist? Why do we go around pretending like afflictions do not exist? That is the biggest lie that has been sold to the church. Did I hurt my own eyes yesterday? Mm -hmm. Did I just look into the mirror and, 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 and dip hands into my eyes so they could be blood red? Guys, Satan is real. We have invisible enemies we cannot see. And sometimes they're poking us on all sides. It's not your imagination. It's real. It's real. The world is trying to make us feel like it's not real. That is why I'm, I'm preaching this with this kind of urgency. We have enemies against us that we cannot see. We have enemies against us. I, I was telling my wife, you know, when the Lord asked me to leave the jobs I've done a little while ago, and I found out that I've done, was it 16 jobs in 14 years or something? I, I was I was wondering, how did that happen? Because there was a destructive pattern I had to break. I'll get to a place of work, I'll be celebrated. Oh, this is the best person since sliced bread. A few weeks down the line, they're looking for stones to stone me. When it happened two times, that, that was a possibility. Mm -hmm. When it happened the eighth time, you know, wait a minute, something is wrong here. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is helping anybody. Yes. I'm sorry if I'm yes. coming across as passionate, it's just because I'm truly passionate about this topic. Because it took me a long time. I thought something was wrong with me. <laughs> and nobody taught me this. So I thought, oh, maybe if I pray harder, maybe if I, you understand, if I do this, if I fast, if I fast longer, we are, the righteous are going to be afflicted. That's what I'm saying to you today. Now, let's read the second part. One, two, go. But the Lord delivers him or her out of them all. 
Hallelujah. That's a praise. That's a place to praise God right there. Do you know that sometimes, I, I, guys at 54, are still getting secure? I never thought that was, that was ever going to be possible. Satan will find something, something that really bothers you, and then you will expand it in your mind. Like you are the only person, you know, this, this is the way they used to describe it when we were young in Nigeria. You feel like you are the only one with a big pole on your head. Can you get that picture in your mind? That's, that's, that's the way it makes us feel. And it's not true. So, this is from the Old Testament, I know. But at least I know the Holy Spirit still wrote the Old Testament. So, there are stuff that will come, guys. There's no way you will get righteous that afflictions will stop. Mm. That's why I dislike many of the messages being preached today. Oh, you've received Jesus. The grace of God is sufficient for you. They lure you into inactivity. They lure you into passivity. And your enemy is still active. You might as well just kill them. Because that is dangerous. But if they know that an enemy is lurking around and they are prepared, maybe they stand a fighting chance. So that's why I'm sorry if I'm shouting. When I get passionate, I shout about stuff because it's coming from the depth of my heart. Because I wish somebody explore this for me. You know. So let's go to the New Testament. For those who don't read the Old Testament anymore, not in our church, but you know, all over the world, whoever listens to this message. John 16, 33. These things are spoken to you that in me you may have peace. But in the world, you will have what? Tribulation. You will have what? Tribulation. Where are we? In the, in world. the world. So, I'm still going to explain those two you know, disparity, but I just want us to, to take it one step after the other. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. So, Jesus was telling them, guys, there will be some attacks that will come against you. But if you are in me, you will have peace. But if you are in me and you are in the world, attacks will still come. They just won't overcome you. That is, this has been preached so wrong by so many preachers across the world. Every time I listen to it, I feel like crying when they are trying to explain it. What he's saying to you is that, look, there's no way you would live in this world that tribulation will not come. It's impossible. But if you are in God, then you will be in a state of peace. But because your physical location is still the world, that those tribulations will not stop. They just won't overcome you because you are in Christ. Mm. I've listened to so many people I look up to mispreach this verse. I'm just like, whoa, that's so wrong. They don't get it. So whether you are born again 1,000 years, whether you are talking to Jesus every day like this, Jesus brings you tea, Jesus brings you salad, there will be tribulations. There will be people who lie about you. There are people who gang up against you because they are not with Jesus. And Jesus cannot legislate for that. You understand? Jesus can only legislate for you because you are, you are Jesus' child. But who are about the other person who is not born again? Is that Jesus' child? He can't, he, he can't do anything about them. He has overcome them, but they will come at you. They will come against you. They will find something to poke you because... They are under the influence of their father, Satan. Simple, simple. And in case that was not clear enough for those who read the New Testament, let's read this together. One, two, go. Be, be sober. sober. Be, be vigilant. vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Is there any, can it be any clearer people? I didn't make this up. It's in every Bible. It is the word of God. Guys, be, you better be sober. You better open your eyes. Be vigilant. So once you start to see all those stupid patterns in your life, resist. Fight. Do you know that some days, do you know that some days I wake up, I didn't want to go to work. I'm not going to stand there and be pretending to you like it's all perfect with me. 
place where I'm going to be paid money. I don't want to go. I don't know who this is helping out there. If your mind is under attack, I have good news for you. We are all under attack. But the good news is, we shall overcome. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So, there, 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 there will always be mountains, guys. There will always be mountains. The issue is not to be afraid, but to be what? Prepared. Be prepared. If, 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 somebody, if somebody comes in here and tells us, guys, at so, in, in one hour's time, somebody will be knocking on the door. If we have a knock on the door, is it going to jar us? Mm. Are we going to be surprised? Mm. Because we've been told. But each time, as a, as, as a minister of God, each time I'm ministering to children of God across the world, it's almost like they're surprised they have a mountain standing against them. I'm like, are you kidding me? Who taught you this? Oh, do you know that um, at the place of work, some of them have milled against me? What do you think they would do? S line a procession and sing for you? Guys, expect resistance because you belong to God. So for those who don't belong to God, they, the only thing they know to do is to resist you. The day you chose Jesus, you picked a side. It's not for you to be scared, but it's for you to be aware of the reality of the lives you're walking in. Light and darkness cannot mix, but they still coexist in this realm. So be prepared. Whoever is listening to me, be prepared. There will be you, there are some things you try and do, you won't do so well. There are some things you wish you can do better. There are some days you don't even like the way you look. There are some days you don't like the things you do. There are some days you wish your life was different. There's a day you, it will keep going on and on. But in the midst of it, you must stay hopeful and stand on what God says you are. Who God says you are. Not what those thoughts are trying to tell you. You must resist. You must stand up. You must fight. And I'm not talking physical fight. You must resist in your mind. This was the message I was bringing that Satan was trying to poke my eyes for. Because I know this is going to bless a lot of people. Because it took me a long time to work this out. I thought something was wrong with me. So the question is, what tries to oppose us? What tries to oppose us? What are we, what are we faced by? I'm going to try and read it because it's quite uh, a, a few verses there. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. Finally, my <laughs> brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Guys, do we always put on the whole armor of God every day? He's telling us, guys, we need it because we have an enemy trying to attack us. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against human beings. Mm -hmm. Those human beings that are opposing you, they're not the ones coming after you. It is Satan behind them, pushing them, pressing their buttons. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. That's the name of a group of demons. Mm -hmm. They're in charge of like local government. Principalities is the old name for, look, for county. You understand? That was the old English for counties. So, demons that are, that are in charge of an area or groups of areas. Against powers. That's the name of another demon. Powers. Against spiritual hosts or wickedness in the heavenly places. So, those ones are located up there somewhere. Therefore, therefore, it is therefore that, as Kenneth Copeland, we often joke, therefore, Take up the old hammer of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore. Guys, it is dangerous for you to stay in what you call a neutral zone. You will be rolled right over. Is either you are with God 
or you are with Satan. There is no neutral zone in between. There is no neutral zone in between. And many people in the world are in the neutral zone. What they call neutral zone that does not exist. You know, it's like you're saying, okay, guys, no, let, let me just say this in a dramatic sense to, 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 to bring an imagination to head. Let's just say that. I say, uh, I'm going to shoot everybody that stands to the left, and I'm going to spare everybody that stands to the right. And then you have the people standing in between. There are only two sides. Mm. You say that you stand to the left or you stand to the right. And that is where the danger is in our world. Everybody thinks they're sitting on the fence. There's no fence to sit on. You're either with God or you're with Satan. There's no in between. There's no in between. But the good news is this, everyone. This is the great news. Because now all this religion thing is beginning to make sense. God, they made us look like we're those that we don't know what we're talking about. Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. Jesus cancelled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, comma, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Now, my intelligent mind is asking me, so if you already did that, why are they still able to oppose us? Simple. If you go to a doctor and the doctor tells you, I know what is wrong with you, take this tablet, two a day, four a day, six a day, and you'll be well. If you don't take it, what will happen? You won't, you won't get well. That is what many Christians are doing. They are not using what Jesus has already done. Mm -hmm. They are not they are not taking that up. That's when he tells you to pray, that's what that means. When he tells you to command something, that's what that means. When he tells you to declare something, that's what you are doing. You are enforcing what Jesus has done. But when trouble comes and you sit down and say, "Oh, I don't know why it's always happening to me." Uh you are you are losing already because that's not what Jesus asked you to do. Yesterday, when my eyes became blood red, I stood up and I said, what is this stupid? I was so angry that I wouldn't be able to come here to preach today. My wife and I, we prayed. That's the first thing you do when you are, when you are faced by trouble. Not call your best friend, not talk about it, not give it such a, a massive space, which is what many God, God's children are doing. So Jesus has already done it. You have to enforce it. If you don't enforce it, it won't work for you. So everybody keeps talking about what Jesus has done. My question to them is, what are you doing? We know what Jesus has already done, but what are you doing? You don't pray. You don't cover yourself by the blood of Jesus. You don't ask God to protect you. Then you walk into a minefield and hope you don't get blown up. How silly is that? And that's what many Christians are doing. So I'm telling you guys, there will be mountains. The good news is, they shall become flat before us in the name of Jesus. Amen. But to, for you to think they will not come, it's not wise. That's what Luke chapter 10 verse 19 means. Jesus said, I have given you what? Authority mm. to trample on serpents. Serpent is a demon. It's the name of a demon. If you study the Bible very well, Ada, serpent, it's the name of a snake, but it's another name for snakes, but that's some type of demons. It's been used in other parts of the Bible. Scorpions, demon, and over what? In case you'd miss the serpent and the scorpion, and you thought he was just talking about the animals, look at the comma after, and what? Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you use the authority he has given you. You remember what that, that story I keep telling you about my boarding school in Nigeria? We, were the, we didn't have any seniors. Remember my story? Mm -hmm. And because those ones didn't know, they could not work out in their brain that there was no senior in the school where the first set ever. We were, we were sending them on errands. Well, if you are ignorant about things, you can still be punished. Yes. If you are ignorant about things, you can still get clobbered. And that's what's happening to many of God's children. They don't know who they are. So Satan is, is just messing their minds up. 
He's, he's dictating the pace to each and every one of them. And he doesn't have the power to do it. But many, many of God's children don't even know he doesn't have the power to do it. So I, I implore every single person as I bring this to a close that there will be mountains. And I'm saying this from my heart to my, to, to my family, to my spiritual family, wherever they may be listening to this message, I'm begging you, you will have obstacles come up you. I'm not cursing you right now. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Have you ever read the story of any successful person that said, oh, I just went to school and everything went well and I got a job and then I became a millionaire? Who has ever told that story ever before? Is there a reason they can't tell that story? They're like, oh, and I did this and I, this obstacle came across me and then I, I, I circumvented it this way and then I went that way and this obstacle came up and we ran out of money and things were not working. Have you ever heard of any billionaire that has not been broke before? And yet people have this pine, this kind mentality that everything somehow is going to be okay and smooth. It doesn't work that way. But overall, when we look back, we will give praise to God who has helped us negotiate those clumsy obstacles. That will be our testimony. And that will be our story. Stand to your faith. I'm done. Um, to God. Thank you very much. Father Lord in heaven, we thank you for, for, for this message you gave me last week. Lord, I knew it was so important I've been raring to preach it. And so when the enemy tried to put an obstacle in my way yesterday, I was like, I, I, I was alarmed. I'm like, what is this? But Lord, I thank you because very quickly, uh, common sense prevailed and your healing hand extended to me. And I'm grateful that I'm able to stand here with my clear eyes to preach this. Lord, it is not about me. It's about every single one of us listening to this message. Let the power of God, the Holy Spirit, say it better than I've been able to express it in the name of Jesus. Mm. Father, Lord, let those who are in trouble know that there's, there's an answer to, for them. Let them know that there's a way out for them. Let them know that there's a door that God has provided, all they have to do is walk through it. Father, Lord, let them know they are not alone. Let them know that you have already gone ahead of each and every one of us. Let them know that Satan has no power except the one they are giving to him by proxy. My Lord and my God, I thank you because who, it, who are you this mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall be made plain in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord, I use this opportunity to pray for those who are going through troubles, to, wherever they may be across the world today. I command that trouble to be gone in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord, I stand in the gap for them to say that let all that trouble be lifted in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord, for many years, the trouble troubled my, my mind with depression because I didn't know who I was. Father, Lord, whoever is depressed, wherever they may be, set them free in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has anything they are trusting you for, but something seems to be standing on their way, remove that obstacle in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. My Lord and my God, I thank you. I give you all the glory because you are God all by yourself. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Shall we share the grace? Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I pray that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Everything you do will succeed for you. Where you've been failing, you will excel. The exact thing that seems impossible, you'll find a way around it. Your life will be far better than it was yesterday. And you'll keep getting better every day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone, and God bless you. Amen. Glory to God.